Today on tri -Curl Studios, we do what I like to call a no-metal amp-head shootout between the US-made, they're now made in China, PV6505+, 120 watts, and the Mexican-made, EVH5153, 50 watts, 120 watts, 50 watts. I get it, don't pull your hair out, gentlemen. Uh, but both of these here are similarly placed, so, Chances are, if you're looking at this, you're going to compare it to this. If you're looking at this, you're going to compare it to this. Um, now, I also did say it's a no metal amp head shootout, so if you're looking for one that's high gain or metal, I'll put one that I did last year down in the description below. What I've done here, six sound samples, six different guitars. First two are the crunch channel, so crunch channel two. Second, uh, or the next three and four, geez, uh, uh, would be uh, channel one, so the clean channel. I did make sure to do a pushed clean so you can hear what that sounds like. And then uh, five and six are channel three. Uh, there's no like metal or anything like that. It's a, there's one that's rocky. And then the most important thing there is I actually dialed back on the last one. Uh, I tried to dial as much gain out as I really could with a still a usable signal. So that's very important here in um, comparisons like these. Uh, all of the EQs are the exact same. I did not forget to change the resonance control on the rear of the 
so there you go. There are the six sound samples with six different guitars. Um, I want to talk about kind of what I learned when with doing this comparison here. Um, maybe you heard the same thing, or maybe in your own experiences you've experienced the same thing, or maybe something different. Um, but the biggest thing with comparisons like these, um, with high gain type of amp heads, um, is when you're on the high gain channel, dial back all the gain. Um, that way you can kind of hear how much gain is actually in the amp. So 5153, famous for like too much gain, almost too much gain. Um, it's very, very rare on most amps that, that I ever have the gain, even like in a metal or anything like that setting, um, anywhere past half. <clears throat> but dial it back a little more on the 5153. There's a ton of gain in it, which means you can't dial out as much as you can in the uh, 6505 plus. You can clean it up a heck of a lot nicer on the 6505 plus, which still has a huge amount of gain in that amp as well. Um, another thing, and this could just be uh, lack of headroom from the uh, 50 watts to 120 watts, but I found that I also think it's a little bit to do with voicing because they're voice different. But the low and mids on the 6505 Plus were a little more balanced to my ear uh, and to my body because I play these loud and you can feel it shaking uh, from uh, the separate room that I have my cabinets in. But uh, I found that it's, it's a little easier to get a shrill sound, I guess you would say. Not that that's always the worst thing in the world. Sometimes I really like shrill and fizzy. Uh, sometimes it really works in my favor as long as I have the low ends boosted. Um, but I found it was easier to get a shrill sound um, with the 5153. So I generally would dial the high end down a lot more than I would on most other amps, uh, unless I'm doing like a really high gain type of setting, then uh, sometimes it's very pleasing to have that, as I said. Um, but again, that could be a head headroom issue. Uh, it could be just that they're voice different, which I did read that they were voice different, and uh, this was voiced a little more for high end. Um, again, that could just be my experience with it, but could also be something that you're hearing too. Uh, last thing I do want to say here, if you're kind of looking to purchase one over the other and you're worried about this being 50 watts, you're going to get the volume with the 50 watts. You'll be able to play with a drummer, you'll be able to record all of that stuff with the 50 watts. Um, it's, again, it's to do with headroom. So the more you crank it, the easier it's going to break up on a 50 watt. 100 watt, you can crank it a little more without getting a little more um, break up or maybe saturation, you could say. So sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. I find myself um, gravitating towards 100 watts more than 50 watts, um, not for any type of bravado or anything like that, not so I can say, I have the 100 watt version. It just costs a little more. But does it really matter? Who cares? Um, but I, I generally gravitate towards uh, 100 watt heads over the 50 watt heads because um, I find there's a little more control uh, when you're increasing the volume on a 100 watt head than a 50 watt head, if that makes any sense. Um, when you're increasing the volume, your frequencies do change. Um, so a lot of the time, you can dial back the high end on your sound. Um, and it'll be the it'll kind of sound the same if you're if you're cranking it. That really makes sense. But yeah, don't worry about it if it's a 50 watt amp. It, it'll work out for you. You may just want to get a 100 watt amp uh, down the road. I find when you're recording, <laughs> I, I, that's really uh, when I'm I'm wanting uh, the 100 watt over the 50 watt version. But anyway. Um, you won't have any problems with it, but make sure to try it out yourself. Go into a store and try it out. I'm not a bring your own guitar kind of guy. Um, it's too much work for me. And usually when I'm going into a store, they've got guitars that I can play that sound similar and feel similar to what I own. Don't be a douche canoe.
Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Ryan from Traco Studios. I'll see you today.